Hello guys, my name is Luke. I'm Bernie. And you're watching At The Concession Stand. This is going to be the first episode of hopefully something we do more of if you guys like this type of content. Um, so yeah, we're going to get right into it. So yeah. first of all, we're talking about um, Die Hard. Die right? Hard, the first one. And the reason we picked this movie is because everyone talks about how it's a Christmas movie, mm -hmm. and neither one of us had ever watched it before. Never seen it. So we figured this was like a good place to start with the time of the year that it is, and uh, especially, you know, with us being kind of unsure of like how much of a Christmas movie it was. I wanted to start with maybe Home Alone, but I didn't want to botch that. I know that like everyone like really loves that movie. Not Everybody's that, done it too, though, to be honest. Not know? that everybody doesn't love Die Hard, but it's also really cliche, I guess. Where Super Die, cliche. Die Hard is more like the, like, LOL, it's a comp, <laughs> like, it's, oh it's a God. Christmas movie, yeah. you know, so, um, so yeah, the, uh, plot of the movie. Yeah. Uh, this guy is Bruce a, Willis, Bay. Played Bay. by Bruce Willis. Bay. Is a... Super in his prime. Like, <coughs> like, literally, like, prime, prime. Yeah. So, um... Stress that a lot. <laughs> he's a cop from New York. Yep. And he heads to Los Angeles to see his wife and kids. Uh, like, she moved to L.A. with the kids, it sounds like. Because of work or something. <laughs> like, you know, it, when it first came in, I was, like, kind of looking at it. Like, oh, who is this girl? Because how they introduced her was kind of, like, weird. You know, she's talking. he's talking to that, like, douchebag, you know, mm -hmm. cokehead in, like, the lobby. And they, like, kind of mm -hmm. reference some weird stuff. So I'm like, oh, here we go. 80s stupid stuff. And then it turns out she's the actual, like, breadwinner. Which was kind of cool. But, so, the plot. So, he goes to, from New York to L.A. to see his wife. Right. And they're having a Christmas party. So, like, first of all, like, let's, I guess, you know, we're going to address the Christmas movie thing. <laughs> we got to finish the plot. In a second, right. We got to finish talking about the plot. Thing. Um, so, you know, there's this Christmas party, but the Christmas party gets crashed by terrorists. Right. Um, and so, he's there. Uh, he's a cop, and uh, he basically takes matters into his own hands while everyone else is uh, being taken hostage. Mm -hmm. He's in a separate room, and he uh, ha happens to be armed. He uh, uses the situation to his advantage to kind right. of uh, gain some intel on the bad guys and flip it on them and use it against them, and, you know, he ends up uh, saving the day in the end. Right. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of predictable. The 80s. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, um, the Christmas movie thing. Totally. 100%. Yeah. I like, honestly, not even, like, up for discussion. It is 100% a Christmas movie. Like when, I, when other people had said it was a Christmas movie to me in the past, I, like, laughed it off, kind of, because... <laughs> Like, I was like, how much of a Christmas movie can an action movie be? It's almost like, you know, Trading Places with Eddie Murphy. Oh, um, Like, yeah. that's a Christmas that's movie. That's a Christmas movie. But, like, only in the sense that Dan Aykroyd wears a Santa costume for, like, two seconds. It's all dirty. <laughs> yeah. And there is a Christmas party that's nowhere yeah. close to as lit nope. as the one in this mm -mm. movie. I've never once been to a quite <laughs> as lit of a Christmas party. As the one in Die Hard, and um, I want to apply it that job. But, so, you know, people will talk about that, like, that's a Christmas movie. So I expected this to be a Christmas movie in the same vein that Trading Places is a Christmas movie. Right. You know, like, where... It was just, like, touched upon. Yeah, just, like, peppered in, but not really... Like, <laughs> surrounded. This straight up, like, like, right at the beginning of the movie, the pilot says Merry Christmas. Right. The Christmas party is super lit, like, like the whole time. Like, there's drugs, people, like, doing coke, alcohol. drinking, coke, having sex in, in mm -hmm. the office. Like, Yeah, all... dude. At one point, like, they, like, barge in, and it's just like, oh, my bad. I didn't realize this was occupied. I'll go, like, bang in another room. When John first, when, you know, Bruce Willis's character, John McClane, first is brought into the office and is being introduced to everybody and shown his wife's office. One of his wife's co-workers is doing cocaine. Literally, off of, on the desk. Like, off of her Straight desk. up there. That's, but that's the 80s. You know, it's a cultural thing. But the co you know, John walks it in. Was a glamour he's not in his story. jurisdiction. You know, I'll give him that. He's on vacation. It's not his job right now. But he walks in. This guy just brushes the coke off the table. <laughs> yeah. Like, nothing like, oh, hey, happened. Up, like, dude? oh, I was just making a phone call. <laughs> 
<laughs> what? What? No, dude. What, what's what's that stuff right there? <laughs> um, can we talk about Snape just like whistling? Uh, the Christmas Carol. Like he was whistling as he was like walking around. Somebody was. I didn't even know. I call that. him Snape because it's Alan Rickman, R.I.P. Because I freaking love Alan Rickman again, Bay. So and in their prime, and shake I your head. It's okay. I wasn't like, shaking my head, but I I was just <laughs> scratching. But I did, literally didn't notice uh, the the whistling. So that's a good little pickup that like uh, they I whistled. Them. Like you know, there's like little hints kind of sprinkled all through to where it's like when he's there. in a limo in the beginning he ha- and the kid's playing like the hip hop or whatever he goes don't you have any Christmas music and yep. the kid says this is Christmas music you know <laughs> right. it was just like um, no. like it's not really but <laughs> no it is uh, it wasn't it was just some <laughs> random hip hop song unless I'm mistaken I don't Ooh, know probably. remember when he put the Christmas hat on the dead guy and he wrote ho, ho, ho and oh, blood on his yeah. sweater. Was it blood, though? Because to be honest, the way it was, I think it was supposed to be interpreted as blood, but, but I But it was know. such fine lines. Yeah, it was like, totally it, a marker. Like, what did he but... do, cut his pinky off and like right. write it on his, I think you that know. it'd be cool to really know what was interpreted as it. Is it supposed to be handwritten? It's supposed to be blood? I don't know. I mean, it's obviously handwritten. It. Well, yeah, Dude, but cause... you could write, though, handwritten blood, but it's not going to be as clean. You mean like that. finger painted? Or whatever. Handwritten, well, like... Yeah. Like, well, fingerprinted. I mean, that's hand. It's done by <laughs> hand. I mean, that's its own thing. We can make a whole video on that. But I'm pretty sure it's handwritten. Like, look, I wrote Snape Bay. Little hearts all over this thing. <laughs> Snape is Bay. They kept talking... They kept talking about the safe needed to be open. Yeah. And at one point, Alan Rickman, Snape, says... Snape. Uh, he says, you know, the other guy says to him, like, oh, we're going to need a miracle to get this open. He says to him, well, it's Christmas. It's the time for miracles. So that was a little bit cheesy, but that was, like, another little, but like, you know, Christmas thing. Also, to be fair, this is the 80s. Pretty much everything about this movie is cheesy. Everything from, like, the cheesy sound effects to the, like, I mean, over dramatic kind of acting to the point where it's, like, almost forced acting. So I was, like, rolling my eyes a lot. So it hasn't aged well if you were to compare it from, like, other action movies from now. So it's not something that I would really probably watch again, but it is something that... You should, you know, Christmas movie. Like, I guess if you're by, looking for Christmas movies. Like, this by is today's it. standards, action wise, it probably is a little campy. It's you know? totally campy, but it's also very like I'd say maybe cult, you know maybe the reason though we see that like like as being campy and overplayed is because of how many tropes and like instant classic things this movie created, like the crawling yeah. through the vents. The yippee ki uh, motherfucker, I mean, come on. <laughs> like, um, when the vault finally opened, too, there was um, there was another Christmas song that played. It was like, like a carol, yeah. yeah it, it was, was like, like, more religious-y than it. But it yeah. was definitely a song, though, that like when I heard it, I like wrote it down because I, like, I like, Christmas. immediately right. think of that song as being a Christmas song because, you know, it may not be like written as a Christmas song, but when else have you heard it? Right. You know? Right. Um... That's pretty much it. You got anything else about Christmas? No, like I said, I didn't really write much about Christmas as soon as I kind of realized it was a Christmas movie. Like, I kind of I had guess, it in my head that it's like Christmas. I guess the thing was, though, that um, I was kind of surprised at how much it was a Christmas movie. Yeah, I mean, that is definitely something that... Because it almost, like, like the way you would expect certain cues to be hit in a Christmas movie, you wouldn't expect them to still be able to work those same beats into... Uh, an action movie necessarily, but because of the um, like, I guess the way they did it, like the occasional like sprinkling of it, it ended up working out pretty well yeah. in my opinion. Like I like I like I said, I was just surprised more than anything at how much it was a Christmas movie. Yeah. All in all, it was a good movie. I would say so. Do you know what was weird? Uh, and a very like eighties like cultural difference thing. There was that remark when um, she talks to her secretary and she tells her to go have a drink. And the secretary says something about, oh, but I'm pregnant. Do you think that's okay? And, uh, like, is, is, it, is, is the baby okay to have one or something like that? And she says, I think, she said something like, I think that thing's ready to 10 bar. You know, like, like implying that she's ready to burst, like, have the baby at any moment or whatever, you know. But... It really, like, in a modern sense, didn't 
doesn't read well. No. Like, you would uh -oh. never make... Absolutely not. There's a lot of comments in that movie that you would not do in today's standards. Like, I would not say that this movie is very PC, you know, like, politically correct in any way, by any means. Um, I mean, A, they're doing cocaine in, like, some corporate setting, which, I mean, I don't know. I don't work in a corporate setting, so I'm not sure. Maybe they, that is how they run things, but... Or ran things back then. <laughs> to be honest, I really think so. But, yeah, you know, like... Prove me wrong. Nowadays, mm -hmm. you wouldn't tell a pregnant woman to drink no, ever. No, absolutely you, not. You usually wouldn't it make... Torn apart. You usually wouldn't make jokes about babies drinking. No. And not about tending bars either like you would never make a joke about a kid tending bar no, nowadays no. It's like, like even if there's some youtube video about a kid just even holding a beer can it's like get blown yeah. up so yeah like, like parents go to like yeah like, <laughs> it's not go something through a lot that of I really... stuff like that nowadays no. the limo driver was funny mm -hmm. right it was a nice little addition like comic relief totally he was using It was the, something that, like, resonated with, like, viewers, I feel like. If you're not really into the movie and, like, you're kind of stuck in the movie theater, like, it was cool always when he got on the screen. Like, I would feel like I'd be like, oh, it's my man. What's I, up? I thought it was funny how he was using the, um, the car phone to, like, chat Just, with like, chat friends. with his friends and call them up. <laughs> and especially back then, I'm sure there were, like charges associated with that right totally like, absolutely because it was like in cars and like a mobile kind of cell phone before cell phones were like yeah so thing. i'm sure they charge like per minute or oh per oh my god probably ridiculous like a dollar fifty a minute like, yeah so crazy. and he's just sitting in the limo like racking it up because totally, you know not even caring when a customer would be in there using the car the, the car phone that the customer would have to pay the bill yeah so is he putting it on the cop's bill or is it i think what it was was the like that limo picked him up from it but it was bought by the the dead boss that got shot in the beginning. Because that's what he says, oh, uh, you're the one that sent the limo, you know, cool. Oh, cool. yeah, that's right, because John didn't order the limo himself. No. And, and like, he was like, thank you said, so much. Yeah, you know? he said like, it was his first time riding yeah. it on, actually. So, so, like, it was all on, like, the company must have company paid for thing, it. Which, yeah. I mean, the company got blown up at the end, so, like, no one paid that bill, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> like, they'd be like, do you remember that thing that was on the news? Like, no, so I, I guess, do that. So, I guess which I, what I didn't realize during the movie is, so he must just be, like, a company limo driver. Totally. Like, he's that's just some he, kid. That's why he was hanging out in the parking lot. Yeah, and he's like, my boss thinks I'm in, like, halfway to Nevada because the cop told him, hey, wait here when my when we're done with the Christmas party, like, we'll leave with you. It's like, so wait here, I'll tip you extra. He's like, as long as you tip me extra. So, like, it would be, that's, like, totally, like, he kind of, like, had its own, like, kind of thing. But I also want to touch on the fact that while he was listening to his rap music, John was, like, the gun shot off. He was like, come on, you heard it. What's, I can't remember his name, Alfonso or something. He's like, you didn't hear that gunshot? But then while the cop was literally down the street and guns were flying up in the goddamn thing where there was a bunch of, like, machine guns, what, he just didn't hear it? Like <laughs> That was something I was going to get to that's on my list, stuff. And Sorry, like, I didn't mean to, like, I know the, I'm probably going out of order, the but, The fact like... that, um... <laughs> The fact that, uh, like, nobody seemed to be able to hear no, anything No, it was, like, on. completely, like, everybody's like, it's Christmas, what do you mean? Yeah, like, everybody was, like, completely Doing deaf our own to, stuff. It's the to, 80s, like, to all be the honest. gunshots the cocaine, and stuff. It's the drugs. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. But so, the kid in the limo, right, he, um, he was making all those phone calls, and then at one point, he, like, looked in the mirror at the big teddy bear that the, t like, the teddy bear that John left oh, in the yeah. back of the, of the limo, and he's like, he's like, shut up, you know, like he's like. When he like, realized he could not get out of the parking garage. Well, it, I like it was almost like the bear was like talking to him in his conscious. Because he's like know? going crazy. <laughs> well, that, but like, yeah. you know, the bear's like, you gotta help him, you know, type thing, like. Yeah. And then he's just like, shut up, shut you up, know? like fuck. Um, and then at the end. The kid in the limo, like, plows into, like, the ambulance. Save the day. I mean, you literally, he, I he will up. fight somebody to the death if you don't tell me that Alfonso did not legit save the day. And like, he runs up and he punches that dude literally. out. Literally. I mean, One to be honest, also, goes, like, you didn't really see, like, his punch. It was really bad 80s, like, you know, like, camera yeah. action. So, like, totally looks cheesy, but, like, you're just like, hell yeah. Yeah, they definitely, could, like, we could do that shot. We totally do that better. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, and, and then. They paid lots of money to make that. And then in the end. He just drives right up into the crime scene, and uh, no open fire. To be honest, if that happened today, is it, like especially when he has that cop literally just shot. He's like driving all up on the sidewalk and like pushing people right. out of the way uh -oh. and shit. And um, 
you know, he just picks up John, who, you know, a second ago was told he has all this, like, paperwork and, you know, all these answer, questions to answer and, and they stuff. they just ride off in the sunset. Yeah, and then they just hop into the limo. limo. It's and like then, Cinderella. Well, they don't show, do they show him riding off or are they just making out in the back when the movie ends? Mm. Clip the scene. <laughs> so I think, I think they might have just been making out in the back. Or... They sailed off into the sunset. I don't like think Cinderella so. and her handsome prince. If it's Cinderella and her handsome prince, you're gonna play that one. I guess I don't remember right. that well. It's weird we'll that we see, we just literally just we the just movie. watched the movie, and I have and, no uh, idea yeah. if they sat there at the end or drove off. I do want to talk about though how like at different times. I don't know if we're going ahead, like what you want to touch on after, but like how. Throughout the movie, both the villains and John were, like, kind of, like, trying, like, getting a little bit more information than the other, you know, side at certain points to where you're always just like, oh, well, what's going to happen? Like, when, you know, Snape Bay was, like, pretending to be the guy who worked there, like, that was, like, you know, immediately, I, at first I was like, oh, my God, John, seriously, like, stop being the good cop, like, this is, like, one of the bad guys. I really was like, what the fuck is happening? Like, what? And then I feel like you knew, he totally knew that, like, John knew that he knew that he was, like, cons, but, like, I, as just somebody who really doesn't pay attention to detail as much, I'm sitting here writing down notes, like, I didn't see, like, maybe the, like, connection that he had but like i was like oh my god oh my god and then when he didn't shoot it, i was like oh my god like so to be honest i didn't even make a note about it up to that point because i totally saw it coming <laughs> <laughs> so i'm terrible at like reading movies but so, also writing the names down on everybody like, how does he know information from us that you know what like that, that is something that i i really didn't jot down much about so like you know let, let's talk about it now while it's brought up um <laughs> Um, I, uh, I thought that was really interesting too. Like how he's in the, he's, uh, especially cause the first time he wasn't in the vents yet. He's on top of the elevator. You know, he puts the Santa Claus, writes ho, ho, ho or whatever on the sweater. The guy Which rides down. Awesome. It's kind and, of totally like a, and he's laying on room. top of the elevator. And, um, that's when you know, the first time he sees them without them knowing that they're being watched and he's and you you see he's making a tally on his arm of how many people he's seen and he's gotten he's starting to write down names. He's got a permanent marker and he's making that mark on his arm while he's uh laying down on top of the elevator for the first time. Uh... And so I thought, you know, that was really interesting, especially um and then they did a really good job of not doing the full reveal when Hans learned John's name. And he had him on the walkie-talkie. Yeah. They uh, made it seem like it was his wife that was giving him the information at first. Oh, yeah, Ellis. R.I.P. Ellis, that poor little cokehead guy. Um, <laughs> or, or at least, yeah. like, Ellis was going to, you know, tell them the actual truth, you know, of who he was. So, I think, though, that what Ellis was trying to do was trying to play, like, the good guy and trying to get John to say that he was. But I don't think, like, I think Ellis knew he was, like, bullshit. Well, for a time. second, though, it seemed like it seemed like he was, like, going to be, like, the biggest scumbag in the movie. Because for a second, it seemed like he was about to turn in uh, John's wife. I don't remember her name right now. I want to say, like, Nancy or something. Oh, I think it's, like, Helen. <laughs> Whatever. And <laughs> Holly! Holly! Is it Holly? Holly? I'm pretty sure it's Holly. So... Holly, don't um, so they have, uh, you know, he, he goes in and he's like, yeah, I can give you this guy or whatever. Right. And they're like, all right, what do you got for us? Right. And it cuts to, you know, him taking the radio call and they, and they know his name and he's like, oh, hello, John McClain. And you're like, oh, this motherfucker gave up his, you know, wife. Uh, no, I really feel like I knew that it was Ellis that we, he was going to talk to. No, like, see, I really... the way that Ellis was just talking to John's wife a second before that, when he's like, we can either stand around or we can get out of here. It made me think that there was friction between them and that he was ready to, like, turn her in for his own benefit. I you didn't see that at all? I saw him, like, get up, but to be honest, I think the agitation was that he just did a bump of coke because she turned to him and she's like, what 
the hell are you doing? Are you really doing cocaine right now? Like, is that really the greatest thing to do? But he's like, I'm not just going to stand around here. I'm going to try to get out. Because they really think he thought that these guys were going to be able to find him. Or at least John was going to be like, oh, my God. Okay, fine. Here are the detonators. So I really think Ellis thought he was going to win. I don't think that he was going to turn in his wife. I think that that was something that they were going to find out. Because they, if you didn't realize, too, like, they were sitting in, like, Holly's office the entire time. Like, yeah, I knew I knew they were sitting in her office, and that was another part of why I thought it was gonna be him blowing her in, if anything. Yeah, you know, they cut back, and he's got, you know, the the picture in the one hand with the radio, and he's got the wife grip by the arm in the other hand, or but something. But he had a thing for her, to be honest. The, the first scene was him flirting with her, like, and she flirting with him back. So I didn't but, see that. I didn't. No, right in the beginning, like as soon as they're walking in, before you even knew who she was or what this movie was going to be, he was like flirting with her. He's like, "So what are you doing tonight? You know, it's Christmas." She's like, "I got paperwork to do, bro. Like, you know, that's what I gotta do." He's like, "Oh, I was thinking some like mold cider and shit." Oh, like, oh, see, I thought you were talking about Alan Rickman's character. No, that was like a flirt. Was I think she was. With her. No, she flirted with him. That's what happened there. She knew he was bad guy, and she's like, "Okay, he thinks I'm cute, so I'm gonna totally use that for my advantage. I'm gonna use that because she is the wife of a cop." You learn stuff, pillow talk, you know, you, you know these things. I'm sure, to be honest, I'm sorry, are you a police officer, do you know? I really think she did that because, like, they kept on playing her as, like, being smarter than everybody else throughout the entire movie. And I think that that was on purpose. Um, so this all started with the whole, like, information exchange. Thing, information, right? yeah. And so, um... When did uh when did the when did Hans realize that it was John McClane? How did how did that get blown? He out? introduced himself to him when they were in the hallway and he was like offering him a cigarette. So he goes, you know, like, oh, what's your name? And I think Hans knew pretty much pretty and like not everybody was working there, but he knew because he said Clay. And if you notice too, they showed the name on I the saw wall. Yeah. So I think that's when I think you made the correlation that John knew that Hans was not the right like yeah. guy. Me, he before that exchange happened, before he, you know, told him his name, like John gave him out, you know, his name. Oh, my name is John. But I thought he knew it. I thought that his name was already in circulation before that because when no. did when did how did the newscasters the, the, find out? Yeah, no, he the name was in circulation, but before that, Alan Rickman had no idea who John McClane he was. He hadn't seen him, seen him face exactly. So he didn't know who this guy was that was barefoot. He thought he was just somebody. Once he realized that was John McClane, that's when immediately he upped the ante a little bit and made himself. That's when the, that's when the you know gun I exchange think, happened. I, I don't. I think that as soon as you see a guy with a gun that's not one of your guys, you know it's John McClane. So I don't think there's ever that that split second even where you're like, oh, maybe it's someone else. No, you're pretty much like, yeah, that guy's like. So him. so he didn't even need him to say his name. He was already planning on like double crossing him at that point, you know. Because he knew. Because he knew who he was already, you know. As far as I recall. Why did he make such a big like wide eyed? We really need to look back at the like the movie because it, like as soon as John said I'm John McClane, he immediately just was like, Oh my God, it's you, and like. Then other shit happened. So I think that was before the gun I think, exchange. I think maybe that was uh, Alan Rickman like thinking he had him fooled. Like when he introduced himself, he's like, Jesus Christ, this guy really thinks I don't know who he is. You know? I don't know. I'm not all that convinced. I don't know. So... We I don't probably, know. You know, come I back and do this. Again. It's, it's literally my first time picture. watching the movie. Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't know. And we're gonna be looking at the clips. So we might be adding some additions later. Oh, you remember when John's in the lobby? Yeah. And um, he's like, "Oh, I'm here to see my wife." Uh, you know, and the the guy in the lobby. I was literally just looking at my notes for this because I think I know what you're talking about. The guy in the lobby's like, "All right, yeah, we got this newfangled computer." Well, he tried his computer. Also, you gotta look her up, right? <laughs> so he goes to M. She's not under M because she's using her maiden name. He goes to G for like Gershofer or whatever it is. And I think it's like a. <laughs> and. Uh, I want to say Gopper, but that sounds terrible. It's, it's, I was gonna write it down. You know, I should have. Um, 
Um, but so her last name starts with a G, so he goes to the G category. <laughs> he finds her name, clicks on it, and he's like, oh, 30th floor. And the, <laughs> the guard at the lobby says, oh, yeah, those are the only people left in the building. Like, why the fuck did he need to look up what floor she was on then if the only people left in the building are on the 30th floor? Can you, he's like, a rent-a-cop. <laughs> I was like, yo, he's fucking with him. Like, he... What? What for? Um... (laughs) Oh my god, that was hilarious, though. Dude, also, bad representation of technology. Like, all that shit looked really bad. Mm. Like, really bad. I don't know, maybe it's just because it was the 80s, and that's all... That's about about how computers were in the 80s. Like, yikes, bro, like... That's about how it it be back then. How? How did they do anything? And the entire time, too, they're like, oh my god, call 911, the grid's blocked, the grid's blocked. Like, cell phones. Like, I know they had cell phones back then. Like, why didn't the cop have a cell phone? And the bad guys did uh, lock off the building... And uh, they cut the lines. Remember the guy, the blonde guy, pulls out the chainsaw in the beginning, or like toward like when oh, the, when yeah, the bad when guys like, start he's up. like starting to rush and like dude, she's like damn, yeah, bro, like the one stop. guy's working on like cutting the lines like 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 uh, electronically or tapping right. into them. And then or Hercules whatever. comes in and just like all right, and, we're done. And, like, and, we're and done. as he's buzzing across, and the other like, guy's shit, sitting there dude, like speeding to like stuff. yeah to like get it done. And he's like sweating. He's like oh god, I gotta get it done. Like tell your buddy with the chainsaw, big goddamn chainsaw, to chill out and you'll be fine. Um. I thought that was hilarious when the phones got cut with the chainsaw. Um, and it cut, like, everything except the power, you know, like... Why are Europeans always, like, the bad guys? It was, uh... Is it the Cold War? Or are they being, like, some racism? Racism. Europeans are not bad. <laughs> Middle Socialism Eastern. Socialism isn't terrible. European. You know? I mean, it's, like... Racism. Racism. Um. No shoes. I wrote that multiple times. So we've already talked about Alan Rickman, right? Snake. Like a like a, a ton, obviously. Alan Rickman is probably one of the most commonly like, said things in this. Yes, uh, and I just want to make it very very clear too. It was probably one of like I don't know if it's gonna be one of like his best like performances because obviously Snape, you know, it was like a whole ten year long franchise. I mean, you could raise your eyebrows all you want. It's a multi billion. I'm sorry, did you make a billion dollars on that? Nope. So, would oh, I know Alan that? Rickman from... I know Alan Rickman as Snape, who saved the goddamn world, and we didn't even know until the end. And we're all just what like, I know oh Alan God, Rickman Snape. as... I know Alan Rickman... Brilliant actor. I know Alan Rickman as the Metatron from, oh, from Dogma. Dogma. He's the voice of God. So Because he is. Jesus Christ. So, I mean, Love Snape is cool. Snape is bae. But if you're the voice of God, I think you rank a little bit higher. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, dogma fame. They kill Mr. Taganaki or whatever after he won't give up the code. Right. They, like, dude. cap him in the head. That was something that you're just like, well, these guys, like, literally mean business. It was pretty graphic. The, like, pretty blood graphic. sprays all over the window. <coughs> um, I mean, it was definitely corn syrup. The blood. The CGI was terrible too, and he's looking down shit. Like I was like, mm. he pulled the fire alarm at one point, yeah. and the police and emergency responders start to come, but the uh, bad guys have the foresight to turn off the alarm, call the dispatch, tell them that it was a false alarm, and that their everything is all good. And so the police turn around. And it's not until John McClane actually calls through with the walkie-talkie, and they hear the gun. Like at first, when he's on the walkie-talkie with them, they don't believe him. I still think that they don't when they dispatch that cop out. They're like, it's possible. Like, and then they hear they, the gunshots but that's, through the walkie. Yeah. And that's when they finally send a single car shitty police work. out. The entire time it's, it's Christmas Eve. Work. There's not a lot of cops on mm-hmm. the clock, I'm sure, Shit. at that time. It's like 80s movie logic. Like, right. you know, it's like movie logic. There are certain things that is only like, okay, it's a movie. Like, duh. Like, that's why he didn't hear it when they were, like, shooting machine guns up on the roof. They're like, I don't know what's going on up there. It's fucking nothing. <laughs> Um, it's Christmas, goddammit. I want to go home. How about when he used the gun strap to climb down the air vent? Like, when he... I was like, what is he doing? He's, like, unstrapping the gun, this and that. And I, at first, I honestly couldn't tell. I thought he was strapping it in tighter. And that he was going to try to, like, rappel down somehow. And really, he's 
unstrapping it he props it against the window and it's like like the ends of the gun are like just wide enough to catch on the windows like the sill or whatever the vent yeah. sill and he like uses the strap to rappel down and he's like reaching over like trying to get over to the into to the, the dress like literally the where this vent. he is like right now he uses yeah the strap, he, he's, like, he's trying to get into like, the vent that is it like and the snap straps the, or the strap snaps and he like falls into the vent. Dude, is that the only? That's not the first time. Like, it's like not the only time in the movie where you're just sitting here, like, oh my god, like, what the hell is happening? Like, that was something that me first was again. It's like totally like movie logic. Like, to be honest, like nobody really can do it unless you are Bruce Willis and you're playing John McClane and you are in Hollywood. So like that will work. But another time where I was just like, oh my god, oh my god, this is like not happening. It was when he was coming off the roof right after the, the exploded shit, and he's tied to his little like little buggy thing he's got. Yeah. Yo. He takes the fire hose. <laughs> where to God? He unravels it. He ties it around himself one time, and he just jumps off the side of the building. Literally, just clear, just jumps off, and he's like, "Okay, I that hope would, I do this." That would snap you in half. I don't know if it would snap you in half because the way that those like, have you ever seen those like big ass like things? I mean, there's a lot that needs to be there. It's not like you have to be pulled taut in order to like cut a human in half. Like, so I don't think but, you'll ever but have the, that. When when he jumps, it's not like he left the hose like all raveled up. And even if he did, there's no resistance on it. Once some weight starts pulling on it, that thing's just right. down the side of the building. So that stop, that all of a sudden, that jerk, that's like, you know, like when you, like the hangman pulls the lever, you know, and like all of a sudden, like your neck snaps, his back would snap. literally all I have to answer to that. You know, like. It's just 80s movie logic. Yeah, you know, it's an action movie, so there's some liberties like, taken, it's obviously. Totally, like, none with of this, you would not the survive. action, yeah. Ooh, glass on the bottom of his foot? I don't understand how he could walk from that. I get a freaking, I stub my toe, and I swear to God, it lays me out for yeah. hours. Like, feet, I don't. <laughs> his feet were torn off. Fucked up, dude, and I'm scared of infection. Infection is my thing. Like, don't, dude. You gotta get this shit cleaned up. I'm sure he didn't. Like, so, a quick little like side note on the foot thing there's a uh, there's actually a die hard video game tie in video game it's not very good i guess or whatever yeah. um but you never are really <laughs> there's like some good when? there's some good movie tie in games well, that's a t- discussion for another time the um there's a game about this where his feet he's got a foot meter or something like that and uh it's for the NES if he walks on like broken glass like his foot meter goes down and uh, well, that was when the foot meter goes and down, if he like, runs, his foot meter goes down. Like I don't, I guess I don't know what happens when your foot meter runs out because I've just, never like, played stop the game. Walking. But there's a <laughs> there's like a foot meter in the Die Hard game. Totally awesome. It's supposed to represent his feet and th- getting roughed up throughout the course of the. Because movie. it was such a big thing. Because I swear to God, gradual. I wrote all over like my little notes here the fact that he did not wear shoes at all. I was well, like. He, what happened was he took him off to do the 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 toe fist thing, like the guy on the plane I told. I didn't him. really pay attention to all that. Like, why was the toe fist something that he was doing? The guy was it on like the an plane, anxiety kind of thing. The guy on the plane said it feels good. He's like, when you get off the plane, take your shoes and socks off. And he's like, make a fist with your toes over and over again, and it's supposed to feel good or something. So you know he's walking around. He's walking around with the you know his foot progressively get more and more roughed up, like worse and worse as the movie goes. Right. And so that's what like the foot meter in the game is supposed to like represent or something. But but yeah, that was something. Yeah, his feet got torn up. Um, let's keep rapid firing these off. We keep- but also too, I just want to say that like Bruce, him being like completely like a good actor, like when he finally untied himself from that, he was like a sense of panic. That, like, I myself was having, you know, in You know what, scene. though? Yeah, like, on the, in the same subject before we do move on. Um, I'd like to know so if that was, like, a issue. He, he repels off the side of the roof using the hose as, like, his only rope or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's trying to kick through the window with his bloody, bloody feet. Pa- it's not working. I was going to say bloody paws. He, so he, cat so he kicks back. He shoots the window a few times, which is kind of like I've seen that in a couple like video games now. I feel like and stuff. All I saw was the workaholics movie the entire time. I swear. Oh yeah, good point. Swear to God, that was the like, workaholics listen. movie was pretty similar. Yeah. I mean, almost to a T. Lots of parallels. I think they used Die Hard in it. it, and I swear to God. Well, we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that. Use jumps off the side of the building mm-hmm. using the hoses as his only rope. He kicks off the window with his bloody feet. Shoots at he a shoots times. the window a couple right. times. It like shatters. He kicks through it. The metal thing that was like hold like holding him up 
the roof happened to be exploding at the same time. Of so course. the metal thing goes like flying off the roof mm -hmm. and uh, all of a sudden down the side. And like you really get a sense of how heavy it is because all of a sudden like, you know, it's like s sliding him toward the window, like where he's about to fall out of the window right. if he doesn't untie it. And that's where that sense of panic that you were talking about comes from because you can feel like it feels like Bruce Willis is really about to fall out of window. Obviously, he's right. not. He's in not danger. going to. It was like, like um, but you're just like, whoa. Yeah, that was definitely a moment that I, I almost didn't talk about. That we almost didn't talk about. That was yeah, definitely like whoa. You know, because like, like and like his face too. I mean, I could feel the panic because I was feeling the panic, and I was like, same, bro. Same. So glad you're. Okay. Um. Jesus Christ. So. <clears throat> The cop, um, when he shows up, he's reversing all crazy, and he, like, drives off of the ledge, <laughs> and he ends up, like, getting himself all hurt. Like, he doesn't get hit by a single bullet, but he comes out with his head all bloody. All bloody. His mouth bloody. Yeah. And... 80s logic. And the car is just sitting there all propped up against that thing for the rest of the movie. That's it. They don't do anything about moving it. I think that was pretty, like, I don't know if it was supposed to be funny or if it was just... <laughs> it was. To be there? I, I mean, I don't know if it But was then, like, like wiped up his blood, and then all of a sudden, he was Gucci. Like, yeah, you know what? I didn't, I didn't think about that, but, you know, after he's, like, cleaned of the blood, he doesn't... He looks completely unscathed for the entire rest of the movie. It just the point, looks like they squirted, like, blood on him. To the point where you, like, forget that he got hurt. Yeah. So, one thing... I don't want to talk about it too long. The yippee ki motherfucker line. Um, I was expecting the use of it to be cheesy, because it's such, um, like, a pop culture thing. like Yeah, like, I have never seen it. And I did always think, I'm like, okay, so he's probably like, yippee ki motherfucker, bang, bang, bang. Like, that's literally, like... <laughs> but he is, he's very limited on ammo. So he's really not, like, going trigger crazy too often. Because right. he really has to kind of conserve the bullets that he does have. But the yippee ki motherfucker thing, um, when he says it, it's in response to uh, Hans or whatever... Uh, Snape. When they're yeah, Alan Rickman. When they're when they're bantering back and forth, and he calls him a cowboy. Yeah, and he's like, "Oh, all you Americans want to be cowboys," and he hits him with the EPK motherfucker. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I was expecting it to be corny, and it actually is clever and fits well, and became iconic because of those things, not the other way around. Right, exactly. Like you think it was like iconic because like I've always thought it was cheesy, but it's not. It was like really good it was it's definitely nice like sliding. it was classy i don't know that it would have made such a big impression on me like as a moment if it wasn't already such an iconic thing though you know i it would have probably been something that more would have been like oh yeah I remember when he's on the phone and he's you know giving out snape all that shit about... i feel like he said it again um <clears throat> i feel like he said it twice in the movie again we'll have to roll back I think he also says it when he sends the C4 and the monitor down the uh, elevator shaft. Oh, and the whole no, I don't know if he said yippee ki motherfucker, but I just said he's like, yeah, I think he said something. Um, I don't think, he that, definitely I think gets, that's what I was thinking of, he but definitely, I was thinking about it, I don't know if it was it. He could have said something else, but he definitely gets called a cowboy like a few times yeah. by different people. Yeah, which I think is funny. It's interesting for sure. Because yeah. they're European, and again, I feel like they're just making Europeans think that like... But a, the, I think the cop calls him a cowboy too. Like, the one cop grabs the wall, he's like, okay, cowboy, or something, and something like that, you know. I thought it was great how the picture of uh, John McClane was turned over, and how they kind of, like, the movie makes that a focus, like, here and there. Um, and, like, toward the end, you know, you keep thinking he's going to flip up the picture, he's going to realize on his own, somebody's going to tell him, and it's the news that ends up blowing him in. When the news finally talks about it, that's when God he finally it. picks up the picture. I fucking hate them. <laughs> Ass bitches. And they're breaking a whole bunch of laws by doing that. And then he threatens to call deportation on that poor nanny. Like, Yeah, the whole thing with the news report. Totally illegal, by the way. If that happened, like, now, like, no, dude. But to be honest, like, everybody wants their 15 minutes of fame. So I really think it would happen regardless. <laughs> I don't want to get, in, oh God, yeah, I don't wanna get into up. the political legal side of that at Stupid. all. I can um, see you talk about it for hours. Um, Please. <laughs> no, you keep that out of the YouTube video. <laughs> The SWAT team and everything seemed super sloppy. Right? I feel like the entire movie, the police work was sloppy, and I think it was done to, to like, really, like, on purpose. They were literally doing everything. Nowadays, though, 
SWAT teams in movies are always depicted as like super like militant, put together on t- like teamwork on top of each other, shit like that, you know. And in this movie, the SWAT just seemed like they were sending some normal like cops, like in four dudes. Yeah, like four, <laughs> four dudes. Don't try to like get in there. Hey, these, you, you four <laughs> dudes. All right, just yeah. go. <laughs> um, get into that building now. <laughs> Uh, at one point, the police, uh, they send in reinforcements and it's like a tank, like a full blown, like armored tank thing. And the one guy who's kind of like a jokester, like the technologist guy working for the bad guys or whatever, he calls it an RV or whatever. Right. But. That's not where this stops. The scene gets even crazier after he calls it an RV. Yeah, because then the cops are like, we totally got this guy. We're going to, like, get in there. And then, like, missiles out of nowhere. They pull out these, like, military style. They, like, like drill it into the goddamn floor. Yeah, the guy's got, like, like, a, like a. These criminals are, like, like grade A criminals. <laughs> like, they're not. Like, terrorists? Like, yes. They they're, like, terrorists. They're, like, bolting. These sure. um, rocket launchers, like these like missile Super silo legit, things, like. into the floor of the building, and then launching them out of the window. And Richard sure John said they tank. have missiles in here. They have missiles in here. They're like, okay, whatever, cowboy. Like, just send them in. Just gonna go in there. Like, I really, really think that this was probably also it being in L.A. It was not a joke because in the '80s the LAPD was just known to be sloppy in their police work, not yeah, do everything correctly. That's true. You know, so I really think that none of this was on coincidence. Like, yeah, at I mean, all. I, like once again, I don't. It wanna, was great though. I don't want to get into great. like the super like political. It's side not political. Of it or, I'm just saying the, that whatever, this definitely is a point. Like to but, like. There is some truth to that. Do your own research on the Los Angeles Police Departments and the scandals. I mean, it's true. Like, if we think about, like... And the scandals in the 80s, it's all we have to say about it is that there's plenty of information out there where you can do your own research about right, what happened. Exactly. Right, exactly. And then you be the judge of what you want. Um, uh, the tank, yeah, gets blown to smithereens. Um, Which was pretty awesome. They use the word terrorism a lot. Yeah. Pre to the word terrorism being popularized by the George Bush administration. Right. So. Like, so. I mean, in our, like, in our time, like, you know, like I said, I'm not trying to get political. In our time, we're used to hearing the word terrorist. It's on the news all the time. There's a lot of terrorist organizations that are globally known, like, like Al-Qaeda and ISIS and whatever. But uh, back then, terrorists weren't what they are now like in a sense you I don't know, know. I, I think some people would disagree the cold war happened in like the late 70s you know early 80s yeah but and then vietnam <laughs> and things like that so i feel like maybe yeah to where they they said it because i feel like it's always been something that we've heard about it's always yeah. somebody it's like and that's the truth but like, in a in a pre real like 9-11 terrorism right. world, like certain scenes, like when the helicopter blows up on the roof, basically, and when they're f- f- flying by those helicopters in s- at super close proximity, and I'm pretty sure, like, I don't know for sure, somebody would have to fact check this and leave it in the comments, but I'm pretty sure that those were real helicopters really flying by a building in a real city. So I just think that a lot of, like, you know the the like the practical effects and a lot of like the you know like tropes about like you know like air travel he had a gun on the airplane in the beginning of the movie he's not a federal marshal he's not he's just a cop you know concealed carry cops do carrying. have concealed carry and they can go on airplanes with like guns and stuff like that i mean it's just one of those things i feel like you would it be further conceal like he he's it's literally like right here where when he reaches for its bag it's like in plain sight he's like brandishing a weapon on a yeah, plane it's like not Texas or anything <laughs> yeah you know like <laughs> and he's coming Texas. from New York like uh, so yeah you right you know so that's like a, a very like, like gun dramatized. protective state I know we talked about Ellis a lot I'm gonna try to maybe get all the Ellis stuff together in one part of the video 
Um, so, uh, or maybe not. Maybe just leave it as a random hodgepodge of Ellis being Because Ellis was just a random hodgepodge himself. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I didn't was... think that he was going to be the big guy. We even said in the beginning of the movie, he's some no-name. Who knows? Like, we don't need to worry about his name. So he lies about knowing John. Yep. He says that he's known him for years. Years. And he's even like, like, and he acts like John is playing coy through the walkie-talkie. He's like, oh, come on, after all we've been through, you're going to play me like this, whatever, whatever. While the terrorists bring Ellis a Coke, and he's sipping a Coke. And he's like, oh, come on, John, we've known each other for years. Uh, spo- I think spoiler really, though, alert. <laughs> Albert, I really think, like, the bad guys, like, honestly thought Ellis was somebody to John. I really think so, and I thought that they kind of, like, one up to him. They're I, like, hey, they dude, definitely, don't let else die. They wanted like, it to be true, at least, yeah, for sure. For they sure. Want, they wanted to have some kind of bargaining chip, something they could use against him. It was before him. they knew where his wife was, <clears throat> and his wife was in the building, so, like... Because then once that happened, it was It like, is a tricky care. call, though, because if he had just given his name, they probably still would have killed Ellis, you know? But it is, like... It's not even that they were looking for his name. They didn't care about his name. They wanted the bag. They needed the bag. Oh, the detonators. The detonators. Yeah. The detonators were the thing. They did not really. I mean, if he died, he died. That was kind of like a plus, and like it was kind of assumed that if you find the bag, you're gonna kill him. But like the bag was number one because it had the detonators in it. Yeah. True. Um. Yeah, I guess at that point I was just confused. I thought he was they were still trying to figure out who he was, but I forgot you're right. It was totally about the detonators. It was the detonators. They um, implied. And were those the detonators? I guess that's one thing I'm a little confused about. Those are the detonators to set off the explosion on the roof? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Because uh, they had the other detonators because they were able to set off other bombs. What other the only other bomb that went off I thought was when he drops the C four with the monitor down the elevator shaft. Which, how did that explode? So, like, okay, 80s logic. So, what he did was, he put those little, like, metal stuff into the C4. Now, C4 has been introduced in some movies before. Freaking uh, Rush Hour. You know, that was, like, the thing. You know, oh, got C4 in the trunk, better chill out. Like, boom, LA blows up. But, like, I think what they were trying to kind of, like, convey was that then they put that fucking computer on top of it, and there's supposed to be some, I don't know, like, magic electric currents, because you unplug it, and then you throw it over, and that's supposed to spark something, because see, it's like... CRT <coughs> displays do hold a charge for yeah, a long time after they're unplugged. I mean, that's something that you take it off and it's like, ting! Well, even, to, even to the point where, displays, you know? like, when you're working on an old TV... You're supposed to make sure to discharge the one plug that's connected to the tube. Yeah, that was a thing. Because if you don't discharge it and you try to just unplug it, you can end up killing yourself yeah. like, working on a TV. So like, even if it's completely unplugged, because there's still power running through the tube. And so... Just so how you don't reach your hand into like a... So I, I, guess, uh, I guess in that regard, you could assume that like... Whatever those metal things were, were probably like fuses, I guess. Fuses. I really think that they were fuses because if and you notice too on the roof, it's all like chilling. The there. monitor breaks while it's against the fuses, causes a spark, the spark catches the fuses, and that explosion was huge. Gnarly. And he even said, Bruce Willis, as he put it in, he's like, oh, fuck it. And I like kind of chuckled at that. I was like, yeah. Fuck it, it's just plastic explosives. No big deal. I, so, I, like, a hundred, like, innocent civilians here. I like, expected no the um, <laughs> explosion to rise back up the elevator No, shaft. I knew exactly what it was going to do. It's yeah, it was the whole thing. <laughs> You know, because that's such a cliche I mean. nowadays. I'm sure back then it was probably fairly, fairly and it, like I new. I feel like that's what a lot of things have used that because it was done in Die Hard, and Die Hard was such a big thing. And um, uh, I just while I was expecting it to be a really big explosion back up toward him or whatever, because that's such like a big cliche. I didn't expect it to be so big on the floor, like on the base floor where it landed, because it like took out that floor. Yeah. It, like, no, took out again, both of the missile silo C4, guys. C4, dude. Plastic explosives. It took out, like, the whole Military thing. grade. Like, and that's right, like, we were just talking about the RV thing, Terrorists. the missile silo guys. That's why they had missiles. So when he drops the C4, it's to take out the missile guys, and it wipes out everything on that yeah. floor. Yeah, everything. everything. So um, John realizes at one point that uh, that Hans, when he ran into him, that they were up near the roof. And that there must have been a reason that Hans was up near the roof. 
And so John goes back up near the roof to check to see why Hans was up there. Yeah, because he says, like, why were you up here, Hans? And he finds all the C4. He finds, like, a hundred times as much as he used to yeah, wipe Yeah, because he's like, the oh, floor. fuck. And he's like, there's a backstabbing. Even me, <coughs> like, even as a viewer watching that, I saw the destruction that that one brick of C4 did. Now there's, like, a hundred of them. It was definitely put into perspective, because then you're just, like, looking yeah. at it, like, oh, my God. Yeah. And he was like, oh, fuck it. Like, here, I was just going to put all that shit That in was there. a great way for them to put it into perspective, because, like you said, because, like, uh... Not knowing what one block would have done, they could have had, t- you know, 10,000 blocks. Yeah. Like, and I would it gives you, you know... a way to, like, see, like, oh my god, that's literally going to take out the entire proof. Yeah. Like, he's legit. <laughs> the, everybody's going to be there and everybody's going to crumble. I do want to also say that up until that point when John said, oh my god, it's like a backstabbing, they're backstabbing, they went over, he's like, what did he see? Like, it was a backstabbing. Like, that was something that, like, because he's like, I want all these people freed, and they're like, who the fuck is that? And even one guy was like, who are you talking about? He's like, it doesn't matter. Like, like, let them figure that out. By the time they figure it out, we're going to be gone. Like, there's going to be everybody die before they even decide, like, what happened. Mm-hmm. It's all done. That was really So cool. you knew that, a, like, a double cross was coming yeah. from the bad guys. But you didn't know to the scale at which the double cross was coming, you know? Right. But to be honest, though, it was kind of inferred though I think throughout the movie because they were always doing shit up there they had that run like wire they already said multiple times that they have a ton of C4 so like to I knew honest, a big explosion was gonna come and like it was supposed to be like the yeah, movie didn't away. always do a great job of explaining which floor what happened on yeah it was very confusing so what was going on. to be honest when those guys were running the wires and you know there's all this like steam blowing in their face and stuff i didn't know if they were in the ceiling or the basement you know what i'm saying like i didn't i couldn't tell which guys were on the first know. floor as which soon guys were on the top Hans floor was up there and then john said what are you doing up here that's when i kind of was like that, that honestly that's it if he hadn't said what were you doing up by the roof or whatever, whatever mm-hmm. variation that he said, I never would have realized that room was the roof either. I would have forever I thought think they did that, that on was just purpose some mystery because room in the building. They probably went through it and realized. And they realized and like, they said, "Hey, where?" The so fuck in the is in reshoots, we got to point out that that's near the that's hell. They're like, "We're gonna be up by the roof, just so you know." So I was just like, "What are you doing up by the roof, there, bud?" Um, <laughs> you're like, "What?" I was, what? <laughs> so. We talked about how the helicopter blew up near the roof of the building. We didn't talk about who was in the helicopter. So Just like the whole FBI. So the FBI <laughs> squad shows Everybody. up. And they're like, oh, we're running things now. we got to shut down the grid. Stop which everything. Just shutting the grid down is what ends up getting the vault open, yep. by the way. So the feds are actually just playing into the because terrorist Because Alan Rickman plan. is brilliant, and these villains are absolutely the, so they're smarter than the cops. Each somehow the he, like, had, like, the, he knew what the, ter- or what the FBI was going to do. So he got it to a point where the FBI would cut the power in the area, which releases the the electromagnetic lock that's holding the vault shut. So there's other parts that they have to get open in the vault or whatever, but that's like the final thing that they're waiting for, uh, you know, is to get the electromagnetics open. And the FBI comes in, they fuck everything up, they pop the, the thing open, and then they're trying to fly to the roof and attack helicopters they end up shooting at John. Because they thought he was a terrorist. Well, and to be fair, he looked he's like waving a terrorist. around a goddamn machine gun. He's at, all bloody. He doesn't yeah. have shoes on. At that point in the movie, you could it's you could easily mistake him for a terrorist. Totally. Um, and so, you know, they end up shooting at him. And that's when the uh, bad guys, they, they realize that John's on the roof, so they go to detonate the C4. He jumps off with the hose. The top of the building blows up. It takes out the helicopter with it. And the cop makes a one-liner about... The How they're going to need more FBI agents. <laughs> yeah, the specific line, he goes, uh, yeah, we're going to need... He goes, looks like we're going to need some more FBI guys. <laughs> like, what? It's a tragic loss of, like, human life. Sure like, God, six... it's like the com- like, it's just the time. It's like, cultural, I swear to God. Like, like you just had, uh, like, army guys, like, Air Force guys die. You just had FBI guys die. You just had a bunch logic. of United States, like, federal government workers die. And his reaction is, oh, looks like we're going to need some more feds. Like, what on earth? I'm insensitive. Oh, my God. Next, uh, let's talk about references. Yeah. So I've, I've only got two. You, you do all yours. 
one of the references that I kind of noticed that at first I thought it was It's Always Sunny because it's like one of those things. But like, I watched It's Always Sunny, so I kind of know references to some movies because of shows like that. They kind of like satire it, you know, so yeah. I don't really know. So I thought it was It's Always Sunny, but then as I'm like looking at it when they're in it, and I don't know exactly what he said when he was in the, you know, the duct as soon as he walked in. He said something. I don't know if it was the PKA motherfucker or what, but it was in New Girl where they were in like the ducts where the, the model girl was getting married because they kind of did that like literally like play by play, which is kind of cool because like again, that's kind of how I knew what he was going to say lighter everything because it was schmitty schmitty was up there and he was that was his thing you know he was making those jokes or it was schmitty or it was coach or it was one of them winston i think it was winston because winston always had those like those lame ass jokes so like that's something that i had that you know i was like okay totally like that's it um Another one would be the workaholics, you know, like the, the whole movie of them at the hotel, and it was kind of the same situation, uh, to be honest. You had the really eloquent British I do man want to point telling. out that it isn't a workaholics movie. It's got the workaholics It's got, guys, right, yes, you're right. It's not a workaholics but movie, but that's just like... <laughs> yeah, it's a totally different plot, because they're like... What is the name of that movie? I think it's called, like, Game Over Man. Game Over Man. That is totally it. So, Game Over Man, the guys, you know, who did workaholics... The whole movie, yeah. The kinda, whole movie, I think, had just kind of, like, references. Like, kind of just, like... They swing in th to the yeah, window. Yeah, exactly. They've got the, uh, the black nerdy guy running the computers. Running the computers, literally doing everything. Like, and I think they made the same comment, you know, when, like, Alan Rickman said to him, he's like, can you do it? He's like, you didn't bring me here to look pretty or something like that. He made that comment. Yeah, they're and both really kind of like the snarky, funny guy. Yeah, like, yeah so totally 100%. They use that movie as inspiration, and I find that totally, template. like, perfect. They, <laughs> yeah. like, salted that shit right on there, and I ate it up like freaking macaroni and cheese. I love macaroni and cheese. So, uh, you know, as far as, like, you know, um references and uh like other things that have like alluded to this over time obviously there's a ton like this movie now that i've seen it like i obviously instantly recognize that so much mm -hmm. of everything else that i love in pop culture has been taken from this almost directly and i now understand why people are like you've never seen die hard and so <laughs> i don't have like many specific examples i'm sure you know we could make a list that was like a hundred long of like different shows and movies or whatever but what i did think was really funny is that there's actually a specific always sunny in philadelphia episode that makes two references to this movie um, and it's one of my favorite episodes. I love It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. So, when the gang gets held hostage by the McPoyles or whatever. <laughs> it's one of the best episodes because they all start drinking the cold and warm milk. That's the episode <laughs> where, where, um, where, uh, Charlie has the map. I think it's the same reference that New Girl had. When he was in the duct. Yeah, like I said, you know, I'm sure this stuff has been referenced thousands of times. And yeah, while you were saying that, I was like, that's so funny. It's the same exact, you know, thing. But like I said, there's two there's two things. So Frank is in the, the ducts, right? You know, because he's looking for the thing that Charlie's got the map to. It's like his will or something. Charlie's got the, the map to Frank's will. He's up in the ducts looking for it. He's even got the Zippo lighter. He pulls out the Zippo. And, uh... And, um... And, uh... It gets hot, he drops it, you know. <laughs> and so they kind of like make like little jokes about it. But throughout the episode, Frank's got the gun, you know. Oh, and yeah. And they, they finally like get out of the air vent and they're on the roof with every, with all the other gang and the McPoyles. And the gang is like, oh, Frank, you came to save us. And he's like, oh, uh, yeah, I did, you know, like totally not up there for that purpose. And he, you know, they're like, oh, hands up. You know, they got the, the guns pointed at him that turn out to be fake or whatever at the end of the episode. But they don't know that yet. So the McPoyles have, like, the shotgun pointed at him. And uh, he reaches back. He's got the gun taped to the back of his neck. And I always thought that was, like, an Always Sunny original thing. I always thought Frank had having... To be honest, yeah. Like, it never really, like, did it. And now that you said it, and I'm like... <laughs> But yeah, because there's the scene in the end of the movie where, just like, 
Oh, he finally takes out the last goon and Hans while Hans has his wife held hostage with the gun to her head. He's literally got it all pressed up against her cranium and shit. And, uh, you know. Did Hans say something? I think he said his catchphrase, like, EPK motherfucker or something like that. Maybe Hans did. And then say, he laughed at him because he was like, you're Yeah, he you're said rich. it all corny. He's like, oh. <laughs> you can't do it. Um, so, Jeez. um. Comedy is not really all my. <laughs> A little funny. So he's got the gun taped to the back of his neck, and he reaches down, he grabs the gun, and he ka ka, and he shoots both of the guys, and uh, um, then and that's it. He like saves the day, you know, because now the big bad guy and his last goon. I do down. like the watch that was given to her by the by Alice, which again he's just kind of smorgasbord in because he's just like a hodgepodge himself. <laughs> Like, he was holding on, Alan Rickman was holding on to her watch. Oh my god, yeah. And he unlatched the watch and kind of let it go. Because he's like, tell him where you got the watch, Holly. And she's like, yeah, he got me the watch. You know, I think we can agree that Ellis is a main character. No, okay, it's just... Oh my fucking god. Yeah, I guess so, but like... (laughs) Because, I mean, like, we've talked about him more than we talked about uh, the cop that was on, like, uh, the Urkel show. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, he's definitely a main character. So, we were talking about who's who. We, we agree that Alice who's is who? a main character, basically. I mean, to be honest, he's a no-name. I don't even know who the actor is, and to be honest, I don't give but a he, shit. Do you, you don't have to know an actor's <sighs> name to know they're a main character. You know? I don't know. Beg to differ. Um, Change my mind, because I don't think Alice is a main character. <laughs> Please change my mind. We just comments. agreed on it a minute ago. I mean, I said okay, maybe, but yeah, yeah. So back, I know. Stupid um, main character, fine. So, but let's get into the who's who, right? Who's who? The who's who. My favorite who's part. Who? Who's, who's who? Who's who? Who's who? Who's who? Who's who? Mm-hmm. And um. Uh, so who? Let's kind of go back and forth. You go first. Okay, because I've been waiting to say this. So it was the principal from the Breakfast Club. Was the main sergeant, the officer deputy. Played an asshole in Breakfast Club. I think the guy just plays a really good asshole. And I really, like, love him. And I feel terrible because I don't know what his name is. Because I'm just not that great with movies. He's the movie buff, but, like... And honestly, I don't know his name either, Oh, my God. That's so bad because I think he... Is he dead? I don't know. I don't know. Uh... (laughs) I know Alan Rickman's dead, and we if know that s- Snape was the villain. If you if you see this video, we're glad you're not dead. Thanks for watching. Um, so, um, the so, yeah, cop. Th- so the whole time John McClane is talking to that cop on the walkie-talkie, and the cop is. I never really watched Urkel. I think I think that Urkel had the same dad though as like Family Matters or something, and I'm pretty sure. He plays a cop in both those shows. It might even be the same character or something. I never watched either show, so I really I know Family know. Matters. Yeah. The, the comments are going to tear Family this Family Matters is Steve Urkel. But, that is Urkel. And you're, it's the same show you're thinking of. And yes, he was the actor and he did play a cop. Like, he had, like, he had his, like, own, like, Urkel was the cousin. So, like, if we're going to talk about that, Urkel was the cousin and he came in with his, like, family. I guess not to get too deep into the Urkel stuff since I really I don't know a ton about it. And it sounds we're like we're gonna touch back on this. There's gonna be another. Yeah, th- but that's who there it was. That's who he was. So, and his boss was the one that Bernie was just talking about. Yeah, um, I love him. He was also Bay in his prime. I mean, all these guys seriously are really old right now. Which there's something wrong with that. They're hot even still. I guess you can say not Alan Rickman because he's dead. And then, uh, who was the FBI guy with the torn up face? I know him from something. He was in, I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he was in The Mask. I really think he was in The Mask. He was one of the bad guys in The Mask. He played a bad guy before. I feel like we should pull up the IMDB while, like, we're sitting here. Um, I really think... Or we can just do an addition because it is 3 he was in like, the morning. He was in, like, The Outsiders or something. Oh, I don't know, dude, because the Outsiders, they were all kids. This guy was not a kid. Who? Uh. Because there's two Agent Johnsons, <laughs> which I do like. When they walked in, he's like, no relation. 80s humor. Like, what? Cast. Where? Oh. Where? Cast. Oh, my bad. Click it. Do you want me to have your phone? Do you want me to do it? I don't know, man. 
Uh. Robert Davy is his name. Dude, yeah, he plays like. I mean, I think the villain in a lot of movies. Oh, you know what I know him from? Uh. So, just to rewind a little bit, so. The guy from Family Matters, he's the like the main cop he's talking to on the walkie. Right. The um the guy from uh Breakfast Club is like his boss essentially, or the guy who takes charge when he shows yeah. up. And then um the FBI guy that takes charge when he shows up, he is the bad guy from the Goonies. Oh you know the one God, that, yeah. You know the one that's like singing in Italian? Yes! Oh my god! And he Opera was like music. literally my favorite. Like I Yeah. I'm Italian. He's, so I've he's always the loved one that. that in Goonies he's like, You're always giving him everything he wants and he's like all, like you like mad at the mom and saying that his other brother gets like special treatment. Because I mean this other brother is special. <laughs> Uh, it's a great movie. Um, but yeah, so he plays the bad guy in a lot of stuff. I would be curious to know if he's in The Mask, if I remembered it correctly or not. But it's probably not, and I'm probably totally butchering it. I don't think... He, I think... I know who you're thinking of in The Mask. Like, you're thinking of, like, the main bad guy in The Mask that ends up putting the mask on. Right? And that's a totally different guy. Yeah, it just happened. It's a reporter. Oh... The reporter was the dickhead from the Ghostbusters that kept trying to get their operation shut down... He's the one that shows up in their offices, and he's like, um, he's from the EPA, and he's like, um, uh, can I see the storage facility for these ghosts? And Bill Murray's giving him a hard time. He's like, well, no. And he's like, why not? And he's like, because you didn't say the magic word. And he goes, and what exactly is the magic word, Dr. Vinkman? And he goes, why, please, of course. And he goes, may I see the storage facility Please, and then he goes, "Why do you want to see it?" And he's just like giving him a hard time, you know. And uh, I thought it was hilarious because he he still kind of plays an asshole in this movie, um, like with the reporter thing, you know. Especially like he threatens to get that one lady deported at one point, you know, the Ugh. babysitter or whatever. To be honest, I don't know if that's him. I think it's just. The I'm a hundred percent sure it's him. Like no, I think that it is him. I, I'm not doubting you. And to be fair, I'm making this very like clear now. I really I've watched Ghostbusters maybe once or twice. To yeah, where see, like I don't. Yeah, no, I see and I totally believe you, a hundred percent. Because like I, I mean I don't. Never really was into Ghostbusters. I normally get dragged in the comments for that. Like I know it's I'll gonna it happen. <laughs> no, don't cut it out. They should know that. Like it's just one of those things. I can't. Because it's just like the 80s stuff. Like, I mean, I think it's just me being PC and me just being like, strong, independent women that don't need no man. And when they make those kinds of, like, comments, I'm just like, fuck that. Um, <laughs> like, so, whatever. and then you said that the one guy running around with the blonde hair. Looked like Fabio, but to be honest, I think it was just more commenting on the fact that the acting was so terrible that I think that he was just kind of put in. To be put in, but then he got shot. But like the way he was running, we're like, "Go run!" He was like, eh, "I'm so, out of here." I mean, just to like was, defend like, it hair. as a movie, you know, like in a movie Waste. standpoint, right? When you make a movie, you have a budget, right? And you have to decide, okay, these actors are gonna have lines; these actors aren't. You know, like you know, you can only write like that movie had like fifty to a hundred people in it, probably. You know, actors on screen throughout the movie, whatever. <sighs> And so you can only give so many of them lines. So the people that you're not giving lines or that you're not giving as many lines, especially, you're not going to spend as much money on. Like a lot of the party goers were literally probably just extras who got paid probably like normal job salary to be their hourly rate. You know what I'm saying? Versus like Alan Rickman as Hans probably got paid some obscene amount of money to be there for the same amount of time, you know? And so... When you're looking at, like, the goons, like, the henchmen, like, whatever you call them or whatever, uh, that are working for Alan Rickman, obviously they're going to have just, like, cheesy, like, 80s, like, henchmen-looking dudes because that's not where the budget goes. You put the budget into exploding Mr. Takanagi's head onto the glass and, you know, exploding the roof off. I guess. And, you know, exploding that the RV, the recreational vehicle that the police drive up in. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Still. I mean. I wasn't impressed. You weren't <coughs> impressed by what? With some of the acting. With a lot of the acting, to be honest. 
Um, <coughs> I mean, I, I, like, it was, like, in the 80s. I don't think that this but bad was acting a, is bad acting. I mean, <laughs> you call it bad acting, but different <laughs> movies are made for different reasons, Dramatic right? a little. And this, yeah. this movie is a movie that was very clearly not made looking to win awards, but was more made looking to entertain moviegoers. Is when you look at something like Die Hard, or when you look at something like, you know, one of the Nightmare on Elm Streets, they're not made trying to be the best movie coming out that year. They're made trying to gross the biggest, like, box office numbers they can that summer. So it's like entertainment. Yeah, it's literally like throw, no, and I get it. Throw away trashy I think it's just made us like me personally then jaded with like you know the movies that we have now because they are just such. We still have a lot quality. of throwaway trashy. Yes, but the good movies are good movies. But the budgets are also a lot bigger. Yes. Um, like, and I mean, like, like especially when you say that, I'm sure like you're thinking things like. You know Harry Potter and you know uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Not even that too. Those more are, or less like also talking like Lord of the Rings. Or... Okay, so that perfectly also ties in with what I was about to say. <laughs> that those are movies where a big part of the budget goes toward CGI special effects, which is not something that this movie utilizes at all. I think they did when he was looking down the elevator shaft well, multiple times. I Not to the it. same capacity at all. To the point where it was very when you're clear, watching like a scene, green screen though, like was when for you're sure. watching a scene in Harry Potter, most likely just the table is a real table, and then everything else beyond that is like a green. I'll let wall. it slide for right now because I feel like we should do a video on Harry Potter, and then we should also watch like a documentary on Harry Potter because a lot of that was actual set. A lot of detail, a lot of time, a lot of money. That's something that J.K. What I'm, what I'm saying, like, donated when from the book sales. When you watch, that was like um, twenty five years in the making. If you watch like a lot of these more modern movies, that you know, while they may be like higher quality throwaway entertainment, like I said, a big part of that comes down to I don't think the acting as much as the money spent on, on making what a it was. making a like believable, coherent atmosphere right you know because this is a movie that's very much grounded in reality and all three of those like franchises that we just mentioned are like not. very fantasy. heavily fantasy exactly. driven and so they they it's need not to a fair be comparison yeah exactly there needs to be so much more time and energy put into making those feel like real you know. i guess maybe then we should compare it with like game over man so and when you compare it to something like that this holds up very well because and like it that does. is that is trying to be a comedy, and when you if you're talking about like that, then that's way trashier of like throwaway like entertainment, you know, like it was still suspenseful. They killed a dog, okay, they, like that's they like, killed I, the puppy. I don't even remember that. <laughs> he was holding on, like they put his little like puppy in the aquarium, and they had one of the bombs on him that had a number. <laughs> And then uh, they let them all go, and they're like, oh my god, they're like, you set off the wrong fucking one. Like, something happened. They're like, they didn't kill the dog. No, they killed the dog. They totally killed the dog. I guess I... Clip it. I, <laughs> no, you know what? I think I think I remember that now. I think I do remember They killed that. the dog, because I even said, I was like, if they kill the goddamn dog, I'm getting up. I guess I what I was going to say... Getting up, and you tell me, come on, just watch it. As far as comparisons go, right, um... What I would compare it to would be, like, um, maybe, like, a lesser-known throwaway cliché action movie of the era, right? Our era? Of the of the, the Die 80s? Hard era, right? So, so when, like, Lethal Weapon. What The problem with that is you're, you picked, the mo- like, the most other iconic action film series, and that's and not I'm what I'm talking that. about. I'm talking about another throwaway piece of, like, like action entertainment. And the only reason... Lethal Weapon and Die Hard, like, are not in that category, like, standalone, is because, like, of the pop culture impact that they made. They both spawned franchises of films that are several films long. So you, like, like, literally, like, it's easy to say, you know, bad acting, this and that, whatever, but only movies like Rambo, Die Hard you know, Lethal Weapon. Only those franchises are the ones that come to mind when you think of 80s action. And if you look at how many uh, 80s action movies were made this year, like the year that this movie came out alone, which uh, I'm not even sure 
off the top of my head. If you look at how many came out, how many like cliche action movies came out in 1988 alone, there's probably like hundreds, if not like a thousand cliche, cliche not its own movies. franchise. Like, cause I know The Godfather right. did come out in that time frame too. And and but that's the thing, right? So something like The Godfather, I'm pretty sure Marlon Brando was nominated for like best actor. Yeah, no, and then it was sure really was great acting. For best yes. Picture. There's a, so, there was a ton of research that went into that. That was also a period piece. It was made in, I'm pretty sure, the 80s, but takes place in the 50s. So all of the cars, so yeah, it turns into the like, clothing, yeah, so it's totally different. it turns into like back into like that conversation about how a Marvel movie or a um, uh, like a Harry Potter movie or a Lord of the Rings movie is so much it needs so much more atmospheric work to hold it together. You know, that's that's what sets. Something I think like Die Hard really further apart. I don't think it's so much the cheesy acting and the one-liners and whatever, especially because it's really dialed down in this one compared to say Live Free or Die Hard, like one of the more recent ones, where every two seconds something's blowing up and you get yippee kaye motherfucking this and that, you know. But um, but I think you know if you compare it like to The Godfather, you know something more like those other f- franchises we're talking about that needs all that atmospheric work. That's why they're looked at as better movies, I think, is because of they they you're sold on it it is that. It, what you're seeing is reality. And in and in a movie like this, I think a part of that cheesiness comes from that there's no way this could happen feeling in those moments. Right. When the roof blows up and everybody's like a floor below and nobody gets crushed to death by falling concrete. Like you're sitting there like how on earth do these people escape unscathed, you know? And when, uh, and like when he j- repels off the side of the building and, you know. It really was just all like really like it's dramatic. And and I think, and like not to, and I'm not sitting here saying like, oh, it wasn't cheesy, it wasn't this, it wasn't that. Like you're, you're 100% valid in your points. But what I'm saying is that it could be worse. It could be a lot worse. Depending on who you ask. Because I can probably guarantee I'm probably not the only one that this, this movie... This will be the last time I watch Die Hard. I probably won't want to see it again unless I, you know, decide I want to see the whole, like, Die Hard franchise thing that's there. Like, I probably won't. I think that Bruce Willis, like... I'll watch it again for Bruce Willis. Saves the movie Alan to Richard. some extent. Um, I Agreed. do. I think that had they cast say, like, not Alan Rickman, not Bruce Willis. Literally, leave the rest of the cast the same. Change out those two actors for pretty much... Anybody. Mo- like, anybody else. Because Bruce Willis wasn't huge back then. Pretty no. sure this was, like, the movie that put him, you know, into the big leagues or whatever, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he was in another things. I don't know, like, you remember that movie? Not, like, big, but it's something else where it's the kid. <sighs> that movie, The Kid? That came out years later. That was the 90s movie. The kid. Um, and so I guess that's what I'm. The kid. And he just tells me, like he just took responsibility. I said it. You should be like Bernie. That's the name. Like the kid. Um, I said it. So (laughs) what I'm saying is like Bruce Willis has been in a ton of other stuff since then, you know. But this movie is responsible for Bruce Willis's like fame and success. I I wholeheartedly believe like that this is what rocketed him into fame and fortune. I and think he was probably the only one that gave solid acting. Him and Alan Rickman. And and the principal, like, sometimes. But, like, all the other cheesy shit, I feel like they could have, like... And me. vice versa, though. That while the movie is, like, cheesy, cliche with this and that, that if you take out Bruce Willis, especially, like, leave, leave, leaving Alan Rickman in there, if you were to just swap Bruce Willis with some other not-so-well-known actor back then... It wouldn't be the same movie. Like his charm, his personality is the reason why people still go to see Die Hard movies. He was a good actor because because it's Bruce Willis. Because it was a good character played well by Bruce Willis. Because John McClane, you know, in theory, now that the character is established and has been, you know, played by Bruce Willis, you could have a whole new reboot. You know, of uh, of. 
fuck's this shit called? You'd have a whole Die Hard reboot, like modern like day, like you know, Die Hard One, Die Hard Two, Die Hard Three, like reboot, you know, franchise. Um, you could have uh, you know, a modern Die Hard video game. You know the way video game uh for movies nowadays a lot of the time aren't directly like tied to like movie launches like they used to be. Like in the PS two era, like there like if a movie came out, a game came out, like hand in hand every time. But then you started to see companies like Warner Brothers got the rights to Batman and didn't tie the Arkham releases at all to the storyline or the like the like the timing of the um, Dark Knight trilogy. You just had these games coming out that were unrelated to the movies that were coming out, and the games were rated super well, you know, sold super well, are considered to be some of the best you know video games about uh, superhero movies of all time. Um, where, uh, you know, like that kind of set the trend. So now you get the Spider-Man game that followed that same pattern and, uh, they're making that Avengers movie that's following the same pattern. And, uh, I think it'd be really interesting nowadays to go back and maybe, you know, die hard video game. You don't have to use Bruce Willis's likeness even as the thing because it's John McClane. As long as you're playing as a believable, badass John McClane, you don't need Bruce Willis's likeness. Anymore. I, I don't know. When was the last Die Hard movie out? It was like years ago now, right? Like, oh, live for your Die Hard. I feel like they came out in like 2015, 2016. Okay, Google. What's the most recent Die Hard movie? A Good Day to Die Hard is a 2013 movie directed by John Moore. I don't know. There could have been another one, though. A Good Day to Die Hard? I feel like Live Free Die Hard was the last one. Live Free or Die Hard came out in, like, 2007. Okay, Google. Uh, when did Live Free or Die Hard come out? Live Free or Die Hard came out in the United States of America. He didn't answer because I saw it in, like... Um, so yeah, Live Free or Die Hard, and then what was the new one? A Good Day to Die Hard? A Good Day to Die Hard. So the most recent movie was made six years ago. I was probably like, I, I, when I was six, (laughs) when I was six, I knew who John McClane, you know, Die Hard, like I had heard of it. To be honest, no. I can honestly say 100% me. I don't know, like, that's just who I am. Maybe I had been, like, talked to about it, but, like. To be honest, John McClane, that's why, like, I didn't know what his name was. I had to ask you throughout the movie a little bit where it was definitely given. I just don't pay attention to details. So I'd say it's fair to say that kids who are about 13 years old right now, probably, you know, when they were, because they were like six or seven when the last Die Hard movie came out, they don't, they didn't care about it, you know. They're old enough now to go see PG-13 movies. You know, Bruce Willis is getting old. Nothing against Bruce Willis. You know, um, he's bae. He is getting old. You know, I'm <laughs> sure he doesn't want to play John McClane forever. Yeah, that's true. You he know, he's a person. Um, uh, so I think a reboot, you know, a film reboot, maybe a video game reboot, something along those lines, I think nowadays could be well received. And I think a lot of that, like, you know, what's perceived as cheesiness, you know, with this movie could be corrected through modern, like, CGI, and uh, as long as it's done right. Please, God, do it right if you're going to do it at all. To be honest, I'm scared of even putting this out there because we didn't ask for it. (laughs) They're doing a lot of stuff right now that, like, we didn't ask for. Like, no one asked us. I would really love to know, like, who put out that survey (laughs) because... I would have loved to put my input in that, but so they could touch. Please, up, God, don't fuck it up. <laughs> touch up the CGI, and, make it so much better, and like, you know, do more like gritty, atmospheric work. You know, make it a little bit better. And, you know, there's. No, I mean, I know that's me probably just being like a girl about it, but like it was just it was okay. All right, don't Bernie, when you say make it better, <laughs> overall star rating right now on the spot, how many stars out of five? Out of five? Yeah, three and a half. 3.5. Definitely worth your time. I wouldn't see it again. All right, so for me, I'd say... <laughs> he hates me right now. Five. I'd, <laughs> I'd say knowing what to expect, going into it, that, uh... Uh... Okay, so I'd say that knowing what to expect, knowing that it's kind of a cheesy, you know, like... 
knowing what I'd say, knowing what to expect going into it, that it's kind of an older action movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say about four out of five stars, which to be honest isn't too far off. For, no, so I think collective we're at like four stars. I mean, you take the average. The, the average between the two would be like three point seven five. Four. Round up. Okay, so yeah, my <laughs> score is the average. Bernie's score doesn't mean shit apparently, and so um. So yeah, you know, I guess overall I'd say about four out of five stars. Um, Bernie said three and, three and, a, and a half. half. Three and a half. So um, it's, you know, I like it to, can be better. I feel like in that time, other movies were better. I like to convert those numbers to out of a hundred, and three and a half is seventy out of a hundred, and four is eighty out of a hundred. I like that ten to be honest. So, I'm just saying, like, that's, those, you know, those are both passing scores. One's like a B, right? That's exactly why I said it. When you look at it, like, it's still, like, a good movie. You can still, like, see it. I would watch a three and a half star on Tomato Meter. I guess, when when you first said (coughs) three and a half stars, to be honest, my brain took it as two and a half stars. My brain took it as, like, right down the middle. It's, like, 3.30 in the morning. Yeah. (laughs) It's late. It's late. (laughs) All right, um... All right, guys, so that's going to wrap up the first episode of At the Concession Stand. Mm-hmm. We hope you guys enjoy what you saw. Yeah. Um, if you guys want to get in on the conversation um, or, you know, if we said anything wrong, offended Please you in some way. Please correct us because we are not. Get in the comments down yeah. below. Um, if you have any requests on movies you want us to, like, talk about. That's you know, like, that'd be We're open cool. to ideas. This I is all movies. very new for us. It's a new format. Um... But yeah, um, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to turn on that notification bell because you got to do both steps nowadays to be alerted when there's new content available. Um, And yeah, uh, this is your boy Luke Thomas NY saying goodbye for now. Peace out. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye.